Welcome to the Dynamic Radiologist Podcast, where we feature leading experts in healthcare. And now here's your host, Dr. Stephen Brownstein. Hello, Dr. Stephen Brownstein here, and I am the host of the Dynamic Radiologist Podcast. Through this platform, I have the great honor to interview top leaders in health and in business to discuss what they are doing to change the world. Some of the amazing guests I have interviewed include Dr. Jeffrey Cronk, CEO of Spinal Kinetics, Smart Injury Doctors, and Smart Injury Lawyers. Dr. Mike Carberry, CEO of Advanced Medical Integration. Dr. Donald DeFabio and Howard Reese, CEO of the Teledentist. This episode is brought to you by Dynamic Medical Imaging. I started this organization 16 years ago and have experienced consistent growth and opportunity ever since. We have the only Phonar upright MRI in central and northern New Jersey. We've had patients consistently coming to our center from over 20 miles away. Over 25% of our patients are either claustrophobic or have failed to have their MRIs completed in a closed unit. They have come here to have their studies performed in a Phonar upright open MRI. We have had over 3,000 doctors from New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania refer their patients to us. What is really telling, though, is those same doctors who have referred their family and friends have come here themselves to have their own studies performed. Please check out our testimonial comments and interviews on our website, www.dynamicmedicalimaging.com, and see for yourself what your fellow patients have said about their great experiences at Dynamic Medical Imaging. Our second sponsor today is Spinal Kinetics, a company I started over 14 years ago. We help medical providers of all specialties evaluate for the presence, location, and severity of spinal ligament injuries. If you do stress radiographs in any format, format, then you can send them to our trained doctors who use our special technology. Spinal Kinetics developed a technology called CRMA, or Computerized Radiographic Menstruation Analysis, which is an advanced x-ray measurement technology to accurately measure the exact abnormal motion problems that occur with a spinal ligament injury. If you have any questions, go to www.thespinalkinetics.com or email us at support at thespinalkinetics.com. Today, I have the great opportunity to interview Dr. Andrew Uzzolino, who's a a uh, doctor of physical therapy and uh, practices uh, in Union, New Jersey. He owns uh, prog- uh, leading, uh, let's see, hold on. He owns, uh, well, Doc, tell, tell me what you own. Uh, so I'm the proud owner of Progressive Edge Physical Therapy in Union, uh, 1390 Stuyvesant Avenue. Uh, great. So tell us a little bit, you know, why you became a physical therapist, your training, your, your backstory. Sure. Uh, so when I was younger, again, I'm, I'm 30, but when I was younger, um, I was uh, doing martial arts. So I did jujitsu and Muay Thai. And what happened was, unfortunately, I injured myself, my shoulder and my knee, which I, I'm a little bit more educated now that I think I had an issue with the rotator cuff and my meniscus. But back then at 17, I wasn't sure. So what happened was I uh, actually went to physical therapy and um, they did a lot of hands-on stuff, a lot of movement stuff, exercises, which back then I wasn't really sure what it was, but it kind of opened my mind because I I didn't know what I wanted to do. So the interesting thing was after that happened, I kind of did some research about what is physical therapy because I I just didn't know. And the, the good thing was also was my father, who is actually a chiropractor, was interacting with a lot of physical therapists. So he gave me some insights from his point of view of what it does, the hands-on approach it does, the time spent with the patients. And uh, honestly, from there, I just said, you know what, I want to pursue this as a profession because it's something that I really enjoyed. It did did help me with my injuries, which I really uh, was happy with at that time. And from there, I just said, let's do it. So uh, what I I did was I uh, enrolled in Fairleigh Dickinson University for my undergraduate up in Teaneck, New Jersey. Graduate with a bachelor in science. And then from there, I went to uh, Long Island University in Brooklyn and um, I did my residencies there. I did my clinical affiliations at Mount Sinai, University Hospital in Newark. Um, I did one in an outpatient facility um, in New York City. And then um, 
I, uh, from there, got a doctorate in physical therapy and then started practicing in 2015. And ever since then, I've been practicing and very happy and proud of it. Is your dad's name Tony? Yep. Yes, yes. He, he actually knows you well, Doc. He, uh, he, says, he says hi, by the way. Yeah, we, um, in my younger days, we had a mobile MRI unit and we yeah. used to park it on your dad's uh, driveway and did oh, yeah. MRIs. You know, oh, yeah. was, uh, I can't believe it, 21 years ago. Yeah, a long time ago. I know. He was, uh, he was really happy. He's like, oh, my God, Tom, I said hi. I can't believe you're doing a podcast. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he, 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 he's a character, that's for sure. Yeah, he, he is a character. I try not to be so much of a character like him, but uh, he's, he's, uh, he is a character. But, you know, Doc, he's been doing it for so long, over 30 years in the same location, and uh, he's been a great insight and inspiration to me um, from seeing it from both perspectives. I mean, the, the nice thing about my office is, where I'm located, it's in the same building as my father. So we do have physical therapy, which I perform, and chiropractic, which he performs. So what the patients get at our facility, which others unfortunately don't, is that they get a perspective of two different types of professions, which are similar and different in their own respects. But someone who's been doing it for 30 years from the chiropractic approach, as well as me from the physical therapy approach, which is the movement aspect. And that's what physical therapists really are. We're experts in movement. Um, so a lot of patients have been really benef benefited from coming to our facility. Um, and they've, I mean, if you look at the reviews right now, I'm um, 58 reviews at 5.0 on Google, and I'm very proud of that. And every one of those reviews patients have done voluntarily. And, uh, it, honestly, everyone means something to me. And I, I think a patient personally, I, I either call them or if they're still in my clinic, I always let them know, thank you for that review. It means a lot because it takes time out of their, their day and they write, paragraphs along with the fit with the information which really makes me feel like i'm doing a good job aside from their recovery itself which you know my recovery rate has been very positive and i'm proud of that as well oh that's great and, and basically you have either you classify as a multi-specialty or integrated practice mm -hmm. with walls you know that that you know it, it's not one uh company it's two separate companies but working hand in hand and you know, I, I had a, a several conversations about you know the, this this big movement toward integrated practices where MDDC you know practices and you know going back uh, I actually owned a couple MDDC practices years ago, mm -hmm. um, but my my fear for the chiropractic profession is that they get assimilated into the medical practice, so their uniqueness, their unique ability, kind of gets uh, watered down. Uh, whereas in your situation with dad, um, both specialties shine. You know, you have two silos with multiple interconnecting uh, ladders, if you will, or, or rungs that patients can go back and forth and get the, the expertise of both you and dad. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's the same human body, but, you know, looking at it from, you know, different aspects and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, quote of Einstein just came to mind, nothing happens till something moves. <laughs> and you, you can use that because I, I think that basically it characterizes both chiropractic because when they do adjustments, they're trying to reestablish alignment through the, the force or motion that they're putting into the spine. Yeah. Um, so you know, it, it, it's, it's extremely interesting, um, you know, how the human body, you know, how doctors approach the musculoskeletal system in the human body, because there, there, there's more than one way to look at it. And it's a very uh, unique uh, organ system. So in, in your practice, what modalities, you know, physical therapy is the use of, use of movement to mm -hmm. correct what's bothering the patient. Yeah. And what kind of modalities do you currently use in your practice? So. What I, firstly, I, I like to say I'm very hands-on physical therapist. I like to place my hands on a patient when deemed appropriate in terms of massage, deep tissue mobilization, uh, stretching, all that stuff, even strengthening we can do through our hands. And what I like about that is you can gauge how the patient is in terms of the impairments they have, the muscle imbalances they have. Um, aside from that, I also am a big believer in electrical stimulation when deemed appropriate and there's no contraindications, obviously. That's why a thorough past medical history of the patient is always taken by me because you have to know if there's something that's contraindicated, you can't do it. Um, 
I do incorporate ultrasound into my clinic when deemed appropriate. Um, I know research is kind of mixed on if ultrasound is really effective or not, but I found it effective for temporary pain relief, depending on what the diagnosis or the impairment is. Um, of course, the topical heat, ice, and all that. Um, so I like doing that. And then obviously prescription of exercise. Our specialty as physical therapists is prescribing the appropriate exercise for the patient to get better because the whole goal is to get a patient's quality of life back. So in terms of what my goal is, aside from the, the passive modalities, which are just as important, is the independence of the patient eventually. So I always tell my patients, this is a partnership between you and me. So when you come to me, we're going to work together. I'll do my part as a physical therapist, and I give you home exercises. You do your part and just kind of stay in the same path. And with that, I've seen great results from it. So I'm a little bit of both. I'm a little bit of passive mo uh, modalities in the beginning. And I think that's also good because before you work on a patient, a lot of times doing this, the e-stim and the heat or ice um, calms the patient down. You know, when they're coming in at the end of a work day, they're stressed out, or even during the work day, unfortunately with COVID, a lot of people are working from home, they have, they're on their lunch break. So they're, they're kind of, you know, hustling to try to get in and get out. Um, so I, I find that starting off with modalities like a electrical stimulation and heat or ice calms them down. And when I calm down, they're in a better place. Then when I do my soft tissue mobilization or hands-on or wherever I decide to do, it, it, it's more relaxing. It's not so shocking for the patient and the muscles. So I'm, I'm a big believer in that. And I've, I found that doing it that way has been really effective and just had patients kind of feel at ease that when they leave, they feel, they feel good. You know, they, they, they get a little bit of discomfort because I'm working on them, but they're coming in, they're coming in in one way and they're leaving in a more relaxed, comfortable way, which I, I think has been very effective for my practice at this time. So no pain, no gain. That's, that's true. Yes. When appropriate, of course, I always say if there's too much pain, please let me know. I don't want you being leaving here worse than you came in, of course. Um, yeah. So I definitely think all those modalities, you know, when deemed appropriate are really effective for a patient. So how have you, how's uh, new technology computers helped you provide your patients with the proper training exercises or you know, clinical follow-up where they can actually do the, the, do the exercises in front of you that you can view that they're doing it the correct way. So how have you applied the new technology, Zoom and everything else uh, in your practice? So, you know, unfortunately, COVID has kind of changed a lot of things. And I think that once COVID hit, it kind of made us use technology quicker than we were ready to use. Um, I did, I do, I do, and I did use Zoom in the beginning to see how it worked. Now, unfortunately, physical therapy is a very hands-on practice. So when you, you're trying to educate the patient through a Zoom, in my opinion, it's not as effective as them coming into the practice themselves. But that being said, I have done Zoom interactions with pre-existing patients um, to see how their exercises are, just to see how their motion is and how they're doing it. I'm a big believer in home exercise programs. So I, I like to send it over through a program I have. And a lot of times that program actually provides video instructions versus just reading a piece of paper, which, you know, I think a lot of people are good at visual learning. So if you see it on a video, it's a little bit more effective than if they just read a piece of paper saying, do this, do this, do this. Um, and honestly, just, you know, communication through the computer. Um, I'm really big on updated technology. I, I try to get everything really online, like uh, social media, get show patients doing exercises, just because I, I want people to see that physical therapy is interactive. You know, it's not just you come, the therapist works on you and you leave. It's, it's working together, having fun, but also keeping a professional relationship that, that the point is that you get your quality of life back so you get back to your prior functional status. So I try to incorporate uh, communication when deemed appropriate, but I always like having the patient in the clinic um, and just seeing them in person, working with them in person. I just think from our profession, that's a little bit more effective in my opinion. So um, besides uh, dad, what other doctors do you like working with that you have a great relationship with? So I, I'm, I really like working with orthopedists. I mean, orthopedists obviously know a lot about the body. They do the surgeries, the injections when deemed appropriate. So I like working with a lot of local orthopedists in the area and also pain management. You know, I, I've noticed because I do do a lot of motor vehicle work, uh, PIP work, we call it. Um, and the good thing about me is that I, I get patients either before they have like an epidural injection or after an epidural injection. And a lot of times in terms of pain, especially after the injection, I've noticed that 
it's more effective for physical therapy only because pain is not the major limiting factor. So once you do an injection from a pain management specialist, I can do more with them to progress them to that independent level um, that they probably couldn't do before, depending how bad the pain is. Um, but, you know, m- my thing is anyone who comes from a specialist, um, I always respect that specialist, you know, be it orthopedist, pain management, uh, neurologist, um, cause I do orthopedic outpatient. That's my specialty. And that's what I focus on. Um, I always respect that worth, you know, that specialist, whoever it is. And if they come in with a prescription or they just, or a direct access, say my doctor said to come see you, but you know, I don't have a referral, whatever it is, I make sure that I am in communication with that office. I try to get records over MRIs if necessary. Cause you know, MRIs are objective. So if someone has say a herniated disc, or something like that, I know how to tailor the treatment aside from the patient just telling me subjective reports of what their pain is. And from there, I think it maximizes the therapy itself. And if needed, I tell the patient, you should always follow up with the, the specialist, if, especially if they referred you over uh, four weeks, six weeks to just make sure that everything in their plan of care is consistent with our plan of care. Because, you know, I, I try to keep a good relationship with the doctors. I think that's important because the whole point is if we're in communication with each other as doctors, then the patient gets better. And that's the end goal here is to make the patient better. So I think that's, that's a, that's something I always try to incorporate in my business. And I think it's worked pretty well. And I think a lot of doctors respect that. Um, so it's, it's been really well. And of course my father has prior, um, um, history with doctors. So once he found out we have physical therapy, they refer to us as well. So that's been a positive as well. So that's why the, like you, like you mentioned, doc, the integrated practice of Cairo and PT has been really effective in that respect as well. Uh, does either you or, do, or dad use acupuncture? Uh, no, we don't use acupuncture. I believe he, he did it a couple of years ago, but we just kind of kept it as physical therapy and chiropractic right now. But in the future, you know, we have been in discussion about possibly incorporating it into the office. Um, but I think everything, unfortunately, with COVID has kind of been a backseat. So once COVID kind of gets, we're back on track and COVID gets under control, then we may have that discussion again. So, um, it, it, it's not a trick question, but mm-hmm. there's a reason for it. Spinal ligament injuries. You mentioned motor vehicle accidents. Yes. Well, the spine, as you know, is made up of 220 ligaments. Correct. And the discs are 20 disc ligaments. The other 200 non-disc ligaments are very inadequately diagnosed because most people don't know how to diagnose spinal ligament injuries. Mm-hmm. Certainly not MRI. MRI is great for looking at you know, disconnective tissue, but not ligament connective tissue. Mm-hmm. And the only way you can adequately diagnose for intersegmental motion abnormality is through stress radiographs. And if you do stress radiographs, flexion extension radi- radiographs, you also have to use a computer program to measure subtle either translational front to back movement or top to bottom angulation. And, you know, we developed the technology for doing this. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that very few doctors do stress radiography. In fact, there's a lot of chiropractors don't do x-rays at all. Um, And I don't know how you diagnose, how you treat something you can't, that you're not diagnosing. So if in fact dead or stress radiographs, and we did what's called CRMA, and mm-hmm. it shows intersegmental motion abnormalities. As a physical therapist, after dad does his manipulation, what kind of treatments would you offer your patients uh, to uh, kind of dissipate the, the, the acute pain mm-hmm. and try to mitigate the chronic pain, if not properly diagnosed and treated, that they'll get down the road? Yeah, so that's, that's, that's a great question, honestly. So what my philosophy is this. Whenever I assess a patient, so we'll say it's back pain, for example, I'm really big on repeated motion. I'm going to have the patient either bend over five to 10 times, extend back five to 10 times and see what increases the pain. Now, if I don't have any type of objective measures, it's definitely more challenging for me as a physical therapist because I don't have anything that's objectively saying the patient has X, Y, and Z. So based on the movement, either flexion, and extension, I'm going to see what increases the pain. And then the moment that doesn't increase the pain and or reduces the pain, I'm going to have the patient use that motion as an exercise. So for example, um, if I have someone that likes extension movements, like a McKenzie method, and they like doing a lot of extension, I'm going to pr- promote that.
but I'm going to be careful when I promote that because as they do it, I'm going to say, do 20 to 30 reps and then tell me how your pain is. Give it a few minutes. Let's see, because if you feel good now, does the pain get worse in five minutes? Or if you feel good now, does it last and you feel great and there's no problems? With that being said, then I'm going to tailor the plan of care around that. You know, and unfortunately, nothing's perfect. So sometimes you do it and a couple of sessions in patients say, ah, it doesn't help anymore. And then you have to tailor it. And it's hard because, you know, extension and flexion of the spine, you know, other than you have the rotation and all that, and that's simplifying, obviously, what the spine does. But you, you try to tailor it to patients' subjective reports, um, pending that the patient says it, you know, accurately what the report is. Um, but after the spinal manipulation that a chiro would do, um, I try to do that. Repeated motion, what reduces the pain, and then do that. And then honestly, when you asked me before about the modalities, sometimes doing a stim and a heat in the beginning, or if the pain's acute, ice and stim in the beginning, calming and down that severe pain temporarily, and then doing the repeated motion and see, you know, you, again, that's why physical therapy is dynamic. Our plan of care can change session to session. And I'm really big on reevaluating the patient each session. So if I say, try doing prone press ups at home, you know, 30, 40 times a day. And then when you see me in two days, tell me how you feel. And they come in and however they say it, I may change it. I may say, hey, let's try the an opposite. Let's do flexion and see how you feel. So, you know, it, it's hard to specifically say I do this because it really is patient dependent, but I'm really big on changing the plan of care and keeping it dynamic. And that's why I say partnership between me and the patient is important. If they're open with me and they tell me, hey, doc, this is how I feel. I'm going to say, then you know what? Let's change it up. If they come in and say, I feel great, whatever is you're doing is working, I'm staying with it as long as it's appropriate. So if, if I was to ask you, you know, if, if I'm a patient and I'm deciding where I should go, why mm -hmm. should they choose physical therapy? And, in, and specifically, why should you, they choose your practice versus any other physical therapist, you know, the big guys out there, the cast mm -hmm. and and the you know, all the other, you know, uh, you know, big guys, um, what makes your practice unique to a point where you should be the only practice that citizens of Union County should go to because you're the preeminent authority in physical therapy in Union County? Mm -hmm. um, so when I started Progressive Edge, the whole idea of me was direct one-on-one -on -one patient contact. And I'm going to, be honest, I am the only physical therapist there. So when you come into my practice, I am there in the beginning to the end. Now, unfortunately, a lot of ther uh, patients, excuse me, patients have told me that they have gone to other facilities and they feel like they're tossed around. That's their words between different therapists and they feel like they get lost in the shuffle. And as a therapist, it hurts me because I feel like medicine today, sometimes people get in and out, in and out. And they're kind of like, what happened? I, I don't know. Did I get treated? Did I not get treated? And they get upset. So when they come to me, I tell them, I am here from the beginning to the end. I, like I said before, I will always update your plan of care. Uh, I, I have the freedom and the, as the owner not to overbook my schedule. So I extend my hours longer, but I can see a patient one-on-one -on -one and literally be there, you know, doing the hands-on, watching the exercises. I do have a physical therapy aide who, ha who is also wants to go to physical therapy school. So she observes as well. Um, and just kind of is there for me in case I need some assistance with something, but I am there in the beginning. So a lot of patients have liked that, that it's almost like, I call it back to the basics. You're coming in, you're seeing one therapist. And when you see that one therapist, I monitor you throughout the whole time. I don't have to reread your file every time. Cause I know it. If I give you a prescription on Monday and you come in on Friday, I know what I gave you. And if you tell me you feel this way, I know I need to change it. I don't have to go back and read the file and say, why did therapist X give you this? And then kind of make up a say something like, I'm sorry that happened. Let me give you this. And then the patient gets confused of, well, what do I do? I was given two different prescriptions from the therapist. And how do I, what do I do? I still have pain. So I feel like a lot of patients have responded well to me on that. And again, I, I promote my Google reviews. If the patients are saying paragraphs long, if they're just happy that they, they see me and I'm there and that um, just a one-on-one -on -one treatment, I feel like that, they, that a lot of patients are, are um or desiring right now, you know, and I think especially during COVID, I've noticed that a lot of new patients who have coming in um, haven't been to physical therapy before. And I think a lot of times 
them working at home, their postural setup is horrible. They're at a dining room table. I mean, this was a last minute change for a lot of them. They're on laptops, they don't have a stand. So the bending over and the neck is hurting and everything hurts. So when they come and see physical therapy, they're like, oh, wow, like I went five years ago and I, I went for a few times, but I didn't know physical therapy can be just you and me working together education wise and all that. So it's almost like putting a new perspective on physical therapy that you do get that one on one direct contact. Also, having my father as a chiropractor, it becomes not just one specialty in the practice. So if I feel like chiropractic would be more effective for the patient, they can easily go see my father, he can do his profession. And if that helps the patient, you know what, the patient got better. And that's what matters. So I think that's a huge advantage of being or coming to my clinic is that you have more than one specialty versus only being around only one specialty. So I, I think that's worked well. And I, I think based on my reviews and everything from Google, patients have responded well. And I, I've been really happy and fortunate that everything's been going smoothly. You know, it, it's, it means a lot to me because I, I feel like, you know, it, it's just the, my, my goal for this practice is going in the right way. And that, that makes me happy. Uh, I think uh, well, continuity of care is, is critical. And I myself had a situation where I go to physical therapy and I did get two different sets of instructions and, you know, which one should I do? You know, exactly. and yeah. so, no, that that's, and, and I see a lot of dad in you, you know, dad, dad <laughs> is such a great mensch in, in the Yiddish, you know, you're such a, a people person and, and caring person. And obviously you have his genes and, <laughs> you know, I, you know, to me, I, you know, what, what's better than a, a father and son working together, but have a wall in between. So when you disagree, you can shut the door and I have to listen that, to them. That's why we're at two levels. Sometimes having that uh, separation between us is a good thing, you know, but, um, you know, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I, I can't give more than words, but in terms of my father, just all the inspiration he's given me, um, the connections he's had with me and doctors that he's known for years, the tools he learns, I mean, I, I, I say now, I respect chiropractors, and I think when it's appropriate, it's a good profession to see. And I think both of us working together is awesome. And I, I, I just patients have been really responding well to it, aside from our, our personalities and our sense of humor. But that, you know, that's that's just us as a father and son. So, uh, oh, no, yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to see my father every day and work with him and learn from him. And uh, it's been it's been great. It really has. And I'm happy every day for it. I'm sure he's happy too. Yeah. I, I uh, it, there's nothing better than a proudful dad that sees his son or daughter happy, successful, helping people. You yeah. know that that's. Uh, I'm sure he gets up in the morning when he can crawl out of bed. <laughs> it's going to be a good day. I'm going yeah. to my, my son and both of us are going to help people. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he can't can't get asked for a better equation for life than than to have that. So, you know, I, I, I want to thank you for your time and thank you. Obviously send my love to dad and always and call. pick up the phone and call me. Otherwise yeah, I'll yeah. bring some bagels over to his office. <laughs> and uh, you know, thank you for your time and uh, God bless. Be safe and be well. Thank you, Dr. You as well. I appreciate Bye. your time. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Dynamic Radiologist podcast. Make sure to click subscribe to get updates on our latest episodes.